When St Anthony's was first built, it was designed to be a landmark. It was designed to show people that the Catholic population is present and is visible. I remember the first time that I uh, saw St. Anthony's. Uh, this was before I was appointed as the assistant priest, uh, and it was at night. And the thing that struck me was the size of the building. And I have to say, when I first saw it, I found it quite uh, intimidating because it is such a presence on the Lancaster Road. You, you can't miss it. Uh, and uh, I just remember driving past it uh, and thinking, gosh, that's a big church. Uh, and then when I was appointed uh, to the parish, uh, the thing I think that uh, struck me, that really impressed me, was going into the church and seeing people at prayer. And one of the wonderful aspects of St Anthony's is that whatever time of the day, uh, you will find people praying. And it, it's people lighting candles, people kneeling down. There's just a sense of prayer. And I was talking to the assistant priest who I was replacing, and he said to me, always remember that at St. Anthony's, this is a shrine parish. I didn't really understand what that meant. And then he explained to me that as a priest, your role primarily is as the guardian of the shrine, about ensuring that St. Anthony's can continue to be a place where people can come to pray, to worship. And those words stayed with me during the, the two years I was at St Anthony's. And I learned so much about the faith and about traditions that I hadn't really been exposed to growing up. Uh, the weekly novena uh, to St Anthony, which hundreds of people uh, gather to uh, celebrate and bring all of their intentions to. The statues and the devotions. I myself was ordained a priest here at St Anthony's. I was a deacon when I first arrived and after one year here serving in St Anthony's parish I was ordained by Bishop Allen in the church and it was a beautiful occasion for me. It's quite powerful, transports you. St Anthony's is such a beautiful landmark for me. It's a real a place that I fell in love with quite quickly as soon as I arrived here, although I've only been here for three years. You feel that kind of that warmth in there as soon as you walk in I mean, the building itself is a very beautiful building, but it's what's inside. The church was built by the sweat and blood of Irish and other kind of nationality dockers and, and workers at the time. Um, a lot of faith and labour has gone into this church, and that's part of the atmosphere of the church. I think passing that on to each generation would be important, yeah. The Antony's uh, attracts people even from beyond its regular parish boundaries. It's a, a church that lots of people love to come to. Some people come from quite a long way, every Sunday, sometimes every Tuesday, to be part of that community. It just feels like the burdens of the East End have come here over generations, and people have found solace and consolation and gone, left St Anthony's with a, with a transformed or a lightened heart. So I just feel the, the prayers of the generations. Every time I, I enter St. Anthony's, it just has got so much history and life in it that I feel it, the walls kind of oozing with prayers.
the shrine of that Saint Anthony uh, has so many people come to it in prayer and with such um, very immediate personal requests that he would intercede for very particular heartfelt urgent needs. It is a place of immense intercession. Come into the building to spend some time with St. Anthony and as St. Anthony is known for lost and found so quite often I come to find myself if not things that I have lost and I feel it quite comfortable to sit down and spend a few hours in the church. St. Anthony's Day is, for me, is just amazing. We have this incredible outpouring um, of, of goodwill and joy uh, and people coming to say thank you and a great celebration afterwards. Because, first of all, the diversity of the people that come here to pray that day, the place is packed. I mean, there must be, like last year, we must have had when at least 1,500 people, I'm guessing more like 2,000 people. The devotion and love of St. Anthony, this saint is, has touched a card in so many cultures and people come and I'm just all deeply touched by their devotion and love of the, this, this, uh, this compassionate saint. When there is a St. Anthony's feast and from uh, the, the, there's a flag roasting on the 3rd of uh, June and the feast is on 13th. So since the flag hosting to St. Anthony's Feast, we feel like we are in another Christmas. An immense devotion to the patron saint of the parish. It's, it's like nothing else. A and that's part of the gift of the Franciscan heritage because of course St. Anthony is one of the great early saints of the Franciscan order. St. Anthony's for the last. And that could be a last soul, that could be last keys, that could be a broken heart. It's, f it's not just because you lose something material, it's within you that you last. There's a great devotion here and it's been here for a very, very long time. You really do feel it when you come in here. It does seem truly, truly extraordinary to have a, a religious community praying their office absent from the Blessed Sacrament when the Blessed Sacrament is in a chapel ten paces away. The goal of this project is to put the building back so that it does to the pilgrims of the future what it did on day one. The Pugin original altar, which is lost, will be copied anew, but brought forward so that the tabernacle will be the center of the Reredos, and then the altar in front of it on Pugin's original steps um, will be the center of the liturgy and the two will work architecturally and liturgically together. Behind the Reredos was the Friars' choir. Their choir stools were not in the sanctuary. The, san the church as you see it as you walk in was purely for the laity. All that decoration was for us. For 1887, pretty spectacular carving. I mean, it is well above average. The intention when it was built in the 19th century is that there would have been some splendor. The original fittings of the church were splendid. The Pugins were an extraordinary firm, started, of course, by Augustus Welby, who was an architectural fanatic. From the magnificent high altar, of course, is what we're, we're concentrating on now. That's the, the first stage. It was destroyed in the grotesque misinterpretation of what the Vatican Council had asked us to do. Um, 
and destroyed is usually a slightly strong term, but not here. It was destroyed with hammers and disc cutters. And in order to tie the concrete block work, they put in bits of wire mesh, which were attached with blobs of cement. And one of those blobs of cement was sitting in the hand of the sculpture of St Anthony. So is this a good idea to raise money for St Anthony? Well, yes it is because of what St Anthony's represents. And you have to understand the need for that presence, that beating heart in the heart of that community. A heart that is in the middle of also of our three great Catholic schools, St Bonaventures, the, our boys' school, St Angela's, our girls' school, and of course the wonderful St Anthony's primary school. So it sits like a, in the middle of a triangle. You have those three schools around it, where, the, where St Anthony's is the heart of what they do. But also you have this remarkable gathering of people, of a parish. But in addition to that, you have all these clients of St Anthony's who come from all over. And they come to this, this St Anthony's is like the hub of the wheel. I think there's like a unique opportunity now um, with the congregation that we have here to, to actually bring back St Anthony to its original splendour. Um, and I think if we let this opportunity pass, it, it might not happen, and uh, which could lead even to a spiral of even losing the church. Is that a good idea to support? Absolutely it's a good idea. Does the work need doing? As a former parish priest, the work needed doing when I was there. Okay, And I'm glad now that we're in a situation where work is starting. And we shall try to restore. We can't, of course, restore the friars, uh, nor can we restore their choir because it's got concrete floors in it but we can restore the memory of it by inserting mirrored glass into those traceried elements so that you'll get, they're, they're so small that you won't be conscious of the fact that you're seeing a reflection of the church, you'll just see twinkling, I hope, that's my intention. This has really become a place which is dear to people and is an important landmark, not only in our neighborhood, but in people's lives as well. The original uh, Rera Dawson Sanctuary is very beautiful and unfortunately it has been um, covered over over the years. But I just feel that beauty is one of the things that people in the parish and this community need the most. And I just see St. Anthony's like a like little pearl of the East End that could be reopened to the beauty. And you know, beauty lifts up, beauty inspires and beauty attracts. And I think uh, bringing this sanctuary back to its original beauty could be a huge focal point for the Catholic community, in not only just in St Anthony's, but in this part of East London. One of the things that speaks to me the most at St Anthony's is actually the Calvary, which is at the back, just near to St Anthony's altar. Actually, is a real place for me as I find it very beautiful, powerful images of Christ on the cross with Mary, his mother, St John, the beloved disciple who's also the patron of our community. To see that Calvary, I find very prayerful. It's something that really does inspire my prayer. I definitely find the rose window fascinating at the back. And hopefully with the restoration, the stonework can, can come alive and be clean there. But I just find that rose window sums up the atmosphere of the church because it's like they're all either Franciscan or third order Franciscan saints who are pointing towards Christ. And that's, that's what the church is, is that the this, this Franciscan saints and spirituality pointing you towards uh, putting Christ at the center of your life. And each of those personalities, because during the lockdown we went through each of them and we, we picked out who they were exactly, what they did. And each of them have fascinating lives, married people, kings, you have priests, you have cardinals, you have uh, poverellos like St. Francis, all different personalities but pointing uh, towards Christ. For me, I would love to see St. Anthony's really awaken with all its evangelization power. It's a, it's a church that's full of people who, who've got faith, who've got real solid faith. And I think the challenge 
for our church and for our communities to pass this faith on. And I think St. Anthony's can be a centre for that, can be uh, the, the root of a, of a beautiful growth. I think for over the next 150 years, we have, to, we have to be more intentional asking ourselves, how can I pass this most beautiful heritage on to the next generation? Faith, which is so joined up to this build, beautiful building and to this community, can really be something which we which we pass on so that it can become, become a real beacon maybe of faith in in the east it is a place of prayer in a remarkable degree people come in their distress people come in their need because they find comfort and help in this place sometimes and it's been 50 years and they enter the church and they go you can see it's powerful for them because it's a, it's a church where they grew up and where they learned about God and where they, where they become men or women. When I got here, the last parish priest, Father Dennis, was very passionate about restoration. Dennis's funeral was um, very much one of the great priest funerals in the history of East London. And people just wanted to be there because they saw in him a sign of hope in their misery, that he would always be there. Dennis was a man who brought unity into any, sp any parish that he went to. I think Father Dennis's uh, funeral, I couldn't even get him through the door. I was outside. <laughs> so that says it all, really. <laughs> I mean, there were so many different people of different faiths who were there as well. Going back for his funeral, uh, I just remember the church being full. Over a thousand people present there. And it is the only funeral of a priest I've been to where both of the priests who were sitting next to me had tears in their eyes. Uh, it was such a, a moving occasion and I think it showed the strength of the community of St Anthony's and, and the love that the parishioners have for their priests. like that the same love and pride that people have in their church can be there in 150 years time and that the beauty of the church will inspire future generations and gather vibrant community and diverse community like we have now uh, in the same way and build on the past like we're doing that they can build on our choices and our prayers and our community can maybe be somewhat present in the bricks of St. Anthony even in 150 years time. I, I would hope so, yeah. If, when we've finished, we generate in the faithful who walk through the door tears of joy and love, then that will be reparation for the tears of the stonemasons at seeing the destruction that we saw. May we never lose the sense of it having been a Franciscan parish because what the Franciscans and the people of the parish together have developed is a parish of great devotion. I, I feel it's not my not home. So that is there for everything, but you just got to open up. It feels like I'm here. I learned many, many years ago that if you worry about money, it never comes. Therefore, the prospect of how much you need to raise which you have to be very honest and clear about, is important. But money follows a good idea. So is this a good idea to raise money for St Anthony? Well, yes it is because of what St Anthony represents. And you have to understand the need for that presence. What's really struck me since I've been here at St Anthony's is to hear often from 
parishioners, how much this is a real place that's close to their heart, how proud they are of the church. I definitely feel right now we're at a point where, where the future is at stake because we have a unique opportunity to restore this building and this church uh, because the people want it and the people want to see a beautiful church and want to see their place of worship. It's a great responsibility you become not by your own actions, not by deciding this is what I'm going to do today, but you become a means of grace. So don't be afraid of it, but no money follows a good idea. And St Anthony's is the best idea in Forest Gate.